You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Over the weekend, LSU had a big recruiting event out on campus, and part of this weekend, LSU landed another commitment for the class of 2025. It's four-star cornerback Jabori Antoine. Um, and there are a lot of layers to this which are very significant. So I'll give you the little bit of a Cliff's Notes backstory thumbnail here on Antoine. So he's a cornerback out of Westgate in New Iberia for the class of 2025. Uh, he is the number 47 overall player in the country, according to ESPN. On three has him even higher as the third best cornerback in all of college football, excuse me, in all of the class of 2025. So this is a really significant national recruit that LSU has landed here for the class of 2025. And he also happens to be a really significant national recruit for the class of 2025 from the state of Louisiana. Uh, to give you a little bit more of the background here on Antoine, again, out of Westgate, 6'1", 170. I mentioned on three ranks him as the 19th overall player in the country, any position. Number 19 overall. In the composite, he's the 45th overall player. So that's when you you combine all of the rankings, services, right? The number 45 overall player, the seventh best cornerback, and the number two player in the state of Louisiana for the class of 2025. Obviously, number one, great player in Louisiana. One of the top players in Louisiana. You had to land him. You've got him committed. Number two, your... Secondary, in particular, cornerback was a glaring weakness this year. We all know that. So you get a player of need in Louisiana, position of need, committed for the class of 2025. And maybe the most significant part of this, after Antoine committed over the weekend, he gave an interview to a lot of different recruiting services, but this one in particular was with ESPN. And he said, uh, this is Jabari Antoine after he committed. And I'm reading, this is two lines directly from this ESPN article. Antoine said it was the return of defensive backs coach Corey Raymond to LSU after a year at Florida, it was actually two, that helped push things over the top for him. Quote, Raymond said he really wanted to lock up opposing wide receivers, so I know with everybody in that LSU building, I would fit in the scheme Great. There's a lot to react to here. But, and, I, and I'm going to talk about each layer of it, but I want to start with the Corey Raymond piece of it. Because we talked for weeks and weeks and weeks about this, about Corey Raymond coming back, and the ideal reason why Corey Raymond was coming back to LSU was this. For a decade, you had a, a conveyor belt of talent just rolling through LSU secondary, and he was the guy getting it here. And despite the fact that there was this somehow nonsensical argument or thought out there that Corey stopped recruiting or lost his fastball and couldn't coach anymore, like, as absurd as that was, and I tried to point it out, you're already seeing dividends of the move. Here you have a top 50 overall player in the country from Louisiana for the class of 25, a cornerback who said the reason, the thing that pushed it over the edge was Corey Raymond coming back. You in, Intellectually, you know that. You know that to be true. I've gone through all the numbers. The, the, the All-Americans, the first-round draft picks, the, the cornerbacks and the pros, but you all know it. And they all came to play for him. The one guy in Louisiana that you wanted for the class of 2024 that you didn't get was Wardell Mack, a cornerback out of New Orleans who committed to him at Florida. When he got fired at Florida, Wardell Mack decommitted and then went to Texas. So, yes, for so many reasons, bringing Corey Raymond back was significant. You also have a very motivated Corey Raymond now as well. And I don't know if I, if I told you this story here. I know I've told it in other places, but... 
after the news about Corey rejoining staff broke, that was like a Thursday. The next day was a Friday morning. I remember it. And I bumped into a, a, a staff member, not an on-field coach, but a staff member. And I bumped into a staff member, said, hey, it's got to be good having Corey back, yada, yada. Just you know, small talk. And this person told me it's like he never left. Him and Frank or Wilson were at Football Ops last night at 9 p.m. calling recruits. I mean, you want to talk about a dude that is motivated because he's back where he felt he never should have left, but it's his alma mater, he loves it, he's where he wants to be. He, you, have an even, you have an even more motivated Corey Raymond than you would have before. So that's one big part of this, is it's, all, it's already the first big score for Corey Raymond. It hasn't even been a month. And it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I also think... The look, I think this this kind of goes without saying, but the future is right at LSU. Um, you're, you've polished off the number seven class in the country here for 2024, and I'll tell you, they're still not done. I mean, they're they're going to sign Bryce Underwood next week. Excuse me, <laughs> not Bryce Underwood. Um, they're going to sign um, who am I think? Uh, Def- the defensive tackle out of Acadian. I'm uh, like it. Dominic McKinley. McKinley, thank you. I was, I was, th- I was, I, my brain was on 25. They're going to sign Dominic McKinley, and they're, they still have a hat on the table for Terry Bussey, and we'll see. But they're not done in the in the portal either. Um, I'll tell you, like LSU had made significant NIL offers to Makai Wingo, Mason Smith, and Brian Thomas all to return. We know they all went pro. Well, all of those NIL funds that were going to be allocated for those three guys are available, and you better believe LSU is going to be a buyer in the next portal cycle. So this roster for 24 isn't done, but the class for 24 as of now is seventh in the country. Um, when you look ahead to 2025 now, you had Jabori Antoine. They're the number one class in the country for 25, and we know the names, right? Bryce Underwood, the number one player in the country, number one quarterback. DeCorian Moore, five-star, number one receiver. Harlem Berry, five-star, number one running back in the country. Jabori Antoine, who's, who I just told you, 247, I'm, I'm sorry, on three has him as the 19th overall player in the country, but in the composite, he's the 47th pl- best player in the country. He's the fourth best player in this class, which goes to show you. That's not even counting guys like Keelan Moses, J.D. LaFleur, Brett Bordelon, Teron Francis, Jalen Bell. I mean, it's the number one class in the country for 25, and then we've talked about 26 as well in Louisiana, where three of the top five players in America are not only from Louisiana, from within an hour of your campus. The number one player in the country is a lineman from St. Aug. The number three, numbers four, and five players in the country go to Catholic and U High, respectively. I mean, you put a fence around the state in 25 and 26, and you have a roster that looks like Bama's has, Georgia's has in their run, and you have a roster that's competing for a national championship. And it's a it is a hat tip to Brian Kelly for, and I, I'll repeat myself because I said it before and I know I'm going to end up saying this again. It's a hat tip to Brian Kelly. He came here knowing that the that you can win at LSU because of the talent here, right? All of the resources and the talent you have here. But it it, it probably took him two years to fully grasp the opportunity to say, all right, Frank Wilson, Scott Woodward, Verge Osbury, help me. Where, who do we need to get that we can add that's going to help us maximize, right? Like this, this soil is yielding a crop and we need, we need to go get all of it. How do I get all of it? And you're seeing it now. And it's going to be a lot of fun over the next few years. A Jabori Antoine, uh, the latest member of the class of 2025 for LSU. Cornerback is still a need for 2024. Make no mis- mistake about that. I'm excited about Jair Brown coming in from Ohio State. We'll see J.K. Johnson, Zy Alexander coming off of injuries. Do any of the young guys that played a lot this year take a step from year one to year two? There's a lot of questions. And I would love to see LSU add another cornerback in this portal class if there's one in the next cycle, right, when we get past spring football. But... When you start to think beyond 24, boy, it's really exciting uh, to look at the possibilities of what is there for this roster as a whole. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.